Welcome to Balancing Redox by Oxidation Numbers. In the last video, we looked at how to write half reactions. To write a half reaction, we took a redox equation and looked at what was being oxidized and reduced. And we wrote a half reaction for the oxidation process and a half reaction for the reduction process. The half reactions also showed us how many electrons were gained or lost. We're now going to look at how to balance redox equations, and we're going to use oxidation numbers to keep track of those electrons that are moving around. So let's look at the oxidation of copper by silver. So I have this chemical equation representing this redox reaction, and I need to balance it. Now there's one atom of every element present here. I have one copper on the left, one copper on the right. One silver on the left, one silver on the right. So why do I need to balance this if it looks like I have the same number of everything on each side? Because the atoms are balanced, we could say this equation is balanced for mass. However, it is not balanced for charge. There's a total of a plus one charge on the left side and a total plus two charge on the right side. Now that can't be. Equations have to be balanced for mass and charge. So I need to find a way to balance this equation so the masses are balanced and the charge is balanced. Now this is a pretty simple reaction to balance, but we're gonna use it to demonstrate a process called balancing by oxidation number. So if I'm going to be balancing by oxidation number, I need to identify the oxidation numbers of everything involved. So for copper, the copper starts as a zero, this one's zero, and it ends up as a two plus, right here. The silver, on the other hand, starts as a plus one, we can see that right here, and ends up as a zero. The solid silver on the product side is a pure element, so it has an oxidation number of zero. So what do these changes in oxidation numbers tell us? Well, for copper, it tells us that we lost two electrons. That's how we went from a zero to a positive two. We lost two negative electrons. For silver, we went from plus one to zero. It was reduced. So we had to gain an electron. And here's where the discrepancy in the reaction comes from. The reason I don't have balanced charges in the reaction is because I so far have copper losing two electrons, but silver only gaining one. And we know that for redox, the gain has to be equal to the loss. So I have to do something to these two amounts of electrons to get them equal to each other. So for this case, I'm going to multiply the first one by one, and I'm going to multiply the second one by two. And this times one applies to the copper, and the times two applies to the silver. But how do I actually use the times one and times two? Well, if I go to the actual reaction, everywhere copper shows up, I give it a coefficient of one. So they just stay the same. But everywhere that silver shows up, I give it a coefficient of two. And now this reaction is balanced for mass and for charge. I have two silvers on each side. I have one copper on each side. I have a total of plus two, because there's two positive ones on the left. And I have a total of plus two on the right because the copper has a positive two charge. So now this reaction is balanced for mass and charge. Let's try another example. In the last video, we had this reaction and we wrote these two half reactions. If you're at all unsure about how to get these half reactions from this original equation, watch the last video because we go through that process. Now this reaction is a little bit different than the last one. I don't have a charge imbalance. Both sides look neutral to start with. But this can be a tricky redox reaction to balance because I have oxygen showing up in two places on the product side. Because I already have the half reactions written, I can see that my issue comes from the seven electrons being lost in the oxidation and four electrons being gained in the reduction. There's my imbalance. So how am I gonna get these two to be the same as each other? Well, I can multiply the first one by four and the other one by seven. That means I'll have four of these, four of these, and 28 electrons. For the oxygens, I'll have 7 O2, 28 electrons, and 14 O2 minus. Now these coefficients I wrote in here to represent multiplying by four and multiplying by seven, these are gonna directly match the coefficients of the actual balanced reaction. So let's see what that looks like. This four N minus three comes from the first ammonia molecule here. That means the ammonia molecule is gonna get a coefficient of four, the same one that's right here. This next nitrogen also has a coefficient of four, but that one comes from this molecule. So this one's gonna get a coefficient of four as well. Now I look at the oxygens. I have seven O2 on the reactant side, so that's my seven right here. 
and I have 14 oxygens total on the right side. Now this is where it's a little bit tricky here. Uh, remember we already used 8 oxygens here. 8 oxygens were already used in this. But I should have a total of 14, according to this, I should have a total of 14 oxygens on the product side. So if I have 8 in this little group here, that means there needs to be 6 in this one. And now this reaction is fully balanced for mass and charge. Balancing redox by oxidation numbers is a simple method. It's only really keeping track of the oxidation number changes and using that to balance the reaction. It's not that helpful when you are dealing with a redox reaction that takes place with an acid or a base. And it also is not as useful for the more complicated redox reactions. For all of those, we have a second method that we're going to look at in the next video called balancing by half reactions. But that wraps up our lesson on balancing redox by oxidation numbers. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.